welcome to an all in episode of On The Record. I'm your host, Dennis Morrison, and this week I have a very special program for you. In Saginaw, an iconic store dealing with music and recorded music is records and tapes galore. There's nobody here that buys records that has not passed through those doors, I'm sure, to meet two of the finest people in business that I've ever met, Bill and Judy Wagner. Well, I count them as dear friends of mine, and I'm very privileged to have them as such. And today, I went to, to uh, the, the record store there on Cork and sat down and visited a little bit with them about the record store, its history, how they started it, the changes they've seen, and, and uh, things that are up and coming. So I hope that you'll enjoy this visit with my two dear friends and I, Bill and Judy. Anyway, uh, um, probably want to know how I got into this business, yes. crazy business that it is. And uh, if the time was about 1974, and uh, we uh, were looking around for something uh, that we could do. Uh, uh, I'd uh, been teaching for a while, Judy been teaching, and I, I said to her, I said, well, we can start a little record shop. and. Uh, where to go? Well, we went by this place, this little building, little white building, and uh, it said it was uh, for rent. Well, it was a princely sum of $80 a month. We didn't know if we could afford that much. I mean, this is 1974, you know. Well, we opened in December. Long story short, we, we went down to a place in Lansing, Michigan, that's called a One Stop. A One Stop is a place where you can buy all the different labels. You don't have to go to each company to buy stuff. I bought everything I thought the store would sell. Well, that wasn't right. I, I found out in a big hurry that they wanted the rock and roll and almost nothing else. So uh, I went uh, ahead and uh, we put our, our original inventory in. We opened in December of 1974. You know, I thought, well, just before Christmas, maybe we can do good. Well, we were open the first day and we were so excited, we didn't sell a darn thing. Well, the next day we sold one record. And I thought, oh man, we're on our way to the stars. And uh, and then, uh, then the next day, I don't think we sold any. And then a couple days later, we sold some. And then ramping up to Christmas, we we sold a few things and that, and we were, we were quite happy with that. Anyway, a weird thing happened. In 1975, KISS, the group, rock, the rock group, uh, released KISS Alive. And this was a big record that, uh, recorded right down in Detroit. And uh, a lot of Saginaw people even were in the, uh, in the audience when that was recorded. And I, and uh, how can I put it? Um, it was it was in great demand the record, and uh, you know we didn't have that big of an audience at the time uh, for our store. We sold a few in that, and then we started selling out of the thing and ordering by the box load. And I thought, what's going on? Well, what had happened was that the jacket that was fabricated, you know, this, these are in the record days, you know, records, eight tracks, cassettes, little tiny bit, but anyway, the record jackets were on a railroad siding somewhere in limbo. And the pressing plant had all these records to put in the jackets, but no jackets. So some of the distributors didn't have anything to sell me, but some others did because they, were, they had record plants in different parts of the country that, that produced the thing and, and had jackets and everything. Well, long story short, um, Kiss Alive put us on the map because most of the other stores had no stock and we did. We had, we had all we could use because we were a different distributor. 
just the luck of the draw, CDs came in about 1981 or so. At first, CDs were really hard to get, really difficult because they, everybody wanted them. In fact, that, uh, you could probably record your neighbor's cat uh, with its tail caught in the door or something and, and have some action. Uh, they, people wanted all these different CDs. Remember what it said? Perfect sound forever. Well, the first CDs were anything but that. They, they didn't realize how to master them and how to make them just right. And uh, also the technology was new, and that's improved both the players and the recording uh, mediums. So that, that worked real well. I, I have to tell you that, you know, when we first started, of course, the, the record was king. Everybody had records. Um, the 8-track was the thing that you'd use in your car. The 8-track was, of course, a, a unit that would play until you took it out. Or until a person threw it out the window because they were <laughs> sick of it. And, of course, nowadays you'd probably have a fine that would be astronomical if you did that. But uh, the 8-track the was popular and the cassette was just coming in in 1975. Judy. You have about every kind of music style that anybody could ever want in this store. I mean, you have everything, it seems like. But, what's your favorite type of music and who plays it best? Oh, I like folk music, some country, but my favorites are like Emmy Lou Harris, Johnny Cash, I, I, Linda Ronstadt, that type of music is my favorite. Has that changed over the years, or was that how you felt in the beginning, too? You like Leonard Cohen now, too? Oh, I like... Leonard Cohen. It's, it's quite a wide, like, I like Leonard Cohen, I like... Neil Young. Neil Young, lots of different people, but it's not hard, I don't like the hard rock, and... Yeah, so rap's not your favorite? Oh, no, I don't like rap at all. <laughs> <laughs> what about you, though? What would be your favorite? Well, rap is number one with me. <laughs> I figured you bum, yeah. bum, 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 bum. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, jazz is my, my uh, favorite thing, and uh, I've been collecting records. I often told people that, uh, they, they said, uh, why did you choose a record shop? I said, well, if I chose a bar, I'd always be drunk. <laughs> record shop, at least a record is, uh, you know, well, it might be addictive, but uh, not real addictive. <laughs> okay. What is record store day? It's a special day that the manufacturers uh, have for independent stores. You have to be an independent store in order to participate in it. And uh, you get to buy special merchandise and you can't sell it beforehand or anything. And then the, on record store day you can open up in the morning and um, people really like it and they usually line up in front and everything and there's a you know since we have had a COVID we've had to limit the number that come in the store you know and wait, wait until they let more people in and that. It takes away a lot of the fun and the excitement but uh, they still did produce and they, they produce uh, limited runs of records that are normally available colored vinyl of all different kinds. And it is just vinyl for it's, well, once in a while, uh, a cassette, they'll make a cassette of something in it, or a CD. Mm -hmm. But it's 98% vinyl, I guess you'd say. And those records are just produced special for that day? And, and just produced special for that day, and maybe the next couple you know, of days I'll, following. You can sell them after that day. Yeah. Well, Judy, you were telling me about... Um, some special things that happened here on Record Store Day. Oh, well, some of the stores we don't have a lot of room, but a lot of some stores, you know, have special events. Have somebody that comes in and plays music or does. Something. We have uh, had a couple of those. Once we had a man that played classical of uh, guitar, and uh, we had some other people that played the guitar. I think a couple of times, but. And you don't really have room for a whole band or anything like that in here. Yeah. So, have you held some of the events outside in front of us? Oh, yes. Uh, major Ports for Miners, when they were here, 
they they played music outside. That was a charity. I forgot that, about that. That was a charity. That. Now they played music outside. The kids had all the different instruments in there. Babes Galore has obviously been a really big success. Is there anything else that you can think of that you'd like to share with the viewers? Well, we 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 base our store on one-to-one -one contact. When you come in our store, we greet you and we will help you. This isn't a self-serve place, but you can if you want. Right? Um, and of course, during this COVID, it's been kind of difficult to um, serve people really the way you want to, but um, we're careful about wearing masks and social distancing as much as we can. And people really need the music. And I think that helps you get through things. And that's what we are here for, you know, providing more or less a public uh, service. It does definitely take you to other places, music. It always does. Right, well, thank you both very much. I appreciate your time. And Thanks, Des. And I, I don't know what the next format is, but uh, it appears that uh, records are back again. Who would have guessed? We hey. started in 1975 with records, and here we are. In 2021. I'm glad you said that because that was one of the questions I had. And <laughs> I'm, I'm glad vinyl's back. Warmer, richer, wonderful sound. Thanks right. so much Thank for having both. us. Okay. Thank you. Thank you.